once saved, always saved, flies in the face of the constant teaching of the Bible from Genesis 1 to Revelation's end. The major evangelical voices are saying, you're saved by grace alone. It doesn't really matter how you live after you're saved. You're saved. We might have our lives cut short as a result of sinful living. We might lose some of our heavenly reward, but no matter what we do, no matter how we live, we're still saved. I grew up in an assembly which uh, taught that, that I've accepted Christ and now I'm guaranteed for all eternity. And the danger of that is that you tend to relax. Once saved, always saved makes the wide way acceptable. We're Christianizing the wide way. We have cut the whole idea of transformed living, we've cut it off at the knees. I believe it's a lot of the explanation of the hypocrisy in the American church and much of the church around the world today because there's a lot of people that are living like hypocrites because they've been taught that they don't have to live holy lives. I mean, we're talking about heaven and hell. We're talking about uh, eternal life. It's not over till it's over. No Christian life should be judged in advance of death. The idea that you can be forgiven, reconciled, cleansed, now live an unrepentant, sinful life and somehow be a child of God is completely contrary to the whole testimony of Scripture and something that was unknown through much of church history. Welcome back to the Bible Geek Squad. Guys, thank you guys for clicking. You already saw the introduction to this video and you already know that I'm not doing a Bible review. I'm responding to this video that's been posted on YouTube. It's titled Once Saved, Always Saved with a question mark. And so I have to respond to this video uh, and it's not even the whole video that I'm responding to yet. I'm responding to just the first minute and 40 something seconds that you just watched because there are lies that are being said already. And it's like, <sighs> okay, I got to calm down. I'm a little feisty right now, but you see, I, I can sit down and I can talk to somebody that believes that you can lose your salvation. We can go back and forth. We can talk about it. We can bust out the Bible. We can say, all right, well, this is what the Bible says. And so we can talk about it. And if there are any misunderstandings, we'll take care of that. At the end of the day, we can shake hands, high five. All right, brother. Hey, iron sharpens iron. We're learning, right? But to go out and you already saw the intro to go out like Oswald or, or Brown or that other guy, they were talking about saying mainstream preachers are saying and teaching that if, if, if once saved, always saved means that you can go out and live however you want. This is what we're teaching, that you can go out and live however you want. Michael Brown says that you may lose some rewards, you may lose this, you may lose that, but it doesn't matter how you live because you were saved. That other guy, one of the other guys, not Poonin, but the other guy, um, said that the hypocrisy of the church, the hypocrisy of these people that believe in one saved, always saved, we're not teaching people to, to live holy lives. Where are they getting their information from? And who are these mainstream preachers? That's what I want to know. I want to know who are these mainstream preachers. Yes, I've met a few people, a few pastors that have believed this. In, in the last, what, a thir 13 years as a pastor, I've met maybe two or three of those. All right, I've sat down, I've corrected because I believe once saved, always saved, or better yet, as it's originally called or titled, the preservation of the saints. It was later on changed to the persevering of the saints. Then it was changed to once saved, always saved. Now we know it as eternal security. But listen, the preservation of the saints is biblical. God preserves those that belong to him. Those that come and surrender to him, he preserves, he protects according to 1 Peter chapter 1. As a matter of fact, you can go to the Old Testament in Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27 when it talks about God removing that heart of stone and giving you a heart of flesh. And not only that, but gives you his Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you, to be obedient to the Lord. And so by that, I mean that when we when we have or when we receive the holy spirit now we desire to do the will of god it's not that we're working our way to 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 heaven it's not that we're trying to earn our way to heaven no it's not an obligation that we have to do certain things no it is a desire to do and please the will of God. It is a desire to be holy. If, if you are a person that you believe that because you are saved and you can go on and live however you want, my friend, you're not saved. 
I'll tell you that much because no true born again believer that's been given the spirit of God can go on and start thinking I can live however I want now. Now I can do whatever I want because after all, I'm saved. No, you have, if, if anybody has ever taught you that and if anyone has ever told you that, they form part of what uh, the false teachers that Jude talks about in, in Jude 1 verse 3 and 4. They pervert the grace of our God. I can easily say the same thing about these preachers that preach that you can lose your salvation. Well, you, you can lose your salvation, but just repent. All you have to do is just repent and, and turn to Christ. And that's all you have to do. You can go on, you can live however you want, you can sin as much as you want, and at the end of the day, just repent and turn to Christ. Okay, that, that's all you have to do. I can easily say the same thing. You see, I used to be one of them that believed uh, that I could lose my salvation. But when I read the Bible and studied God's word, it showed me, no, once I come to Christ, I belong to him forever. I'm given the Holy Spirit as the down payment. I am sealed by the Spirit of God, and I'm giving the down payment that guarantees my inheritance, which is in heaven, not on earth. What passage am I talking about? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 second corinthians chapter 1 verse 22 and one of the most famous verses of all is john 3 16 that he gives eternal life to whomever believes he gives eternal life not partial life until you really mess it up no he gives eternal life and what does this term believe mean? It means to those that surrender to Christ. Because us that surrender to Christ, we're not wanting to live for us. We know where living for us gets us. But when we give our lives to Jesus, when we surrender it all to him, we're living for him now. And sure, we may fall. Sure, we may, we may mess up. Of course, because none of us are perfect. But the Spirit of God is working in us. And so we have a desire to seek God every day, to seek the will of God on a daily basis. And so, yes, we do repent of our sins. Repentance isn't just a one-time thing. It's a daily thing because we sin every day. We fall short on a daily basis. And so, therefore, we're called that if we truly love the Lord, right, we're going to seek Him and we're going to seek forgiveness, not because we have to, but because we want to. That's why. Oswald Michael Brown, that other uh, that other preacher, you know, talking about the hypocrisy that we, we teach that, you know, you don't have to live holy lives. My, I myself, I, I, I know for a fact Dr. John MacArthur and other people like James White, Vadi Bakum or, or Justin Peters, I know for a fact that these guys are mainstream preachers. I'm not. Nobody really knows who I am. But none of these mainstream preachers are teaching you, hey, guys, you're saved. Live however you want. There are people that say, you know what? The Bible says that you can lose your salvation because the Bible says that at the end of, in the end times, people will walk away from the true faith. Yes, it does say that, but it's not talking about believers. And you will say, oh, that's just a cop. What do you mean they weren't believers? Don't you know people in, the, in your church that are not believers and that they enjoy going to church? They like some of these gatherings. They like the music. You don't have to be a believer. This passage is talking about those that have never been regenerated, that have never been given the Holy Spirit. They were people that were exposed to the gospel. They were exposed to church or church gatherings. But you know what? The gospel for them, they, they never surrendered their life to Christ. And so, you know what? The gospel's not for me. Boof. And they walked away. 1 John 2.19 exposes that and says they left us because they were never of us. They never belonged to us. They were never regenerated. They never received the Holy Spirit. That's what passages like that talk about. I can also turn it around and talk about Hebrews chapter 6, 4 through 6. I mean, I can twist that passage and say, hey, you know what? This passage for all of you that are saying that you can lose your salvation... And all you have to do is repent and turn to the Lord. Well, Hebrews 6, 4 through 6 says the opposite. It says that if you fall away or if you walk away after knowing this, hey, guess what? There is no possibility of you ever coming back to the Lord. So I could say you guys are deceiving people because you're saying that if you lose your salvation, it's okay. Don't worry. Come back to the Lord. Repent. That's all you have to do. Hebrews 6 is talking the opposite of that. Now, I, of course... 
I I know the context of that passage. And once again, it's talking about people that were exposed to the gospel, that sat, that saw miracles, that saw the hand of God working in people's lives, but they themselves never surrendered. When you are saved, the Bible says you are sealed by the Spirit of God. And he's given to us. He's our assurance. He's what guarantees our inheritance in heaven. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Once again, 2 Corinthians 1, 22 or Ephesians 4, 30. That's what the Bible teaches us. And there's many more passages that confirm this. No one can snatch them out of my hand, said Jesus in the Gospel of John. No one. When you belong to him, you are his. And that's the beauty of the gospel. So I can go on and talk more about this, but I'm going to go watch the full documentary. I'm going to check it out, make my notes, and I can always make uh, a follow-up video to this. If you guys want to know more about that, let me know down in the comment section. God bless you all. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.